Welcome friends, fiends, and familiars to the Comic Fiends Comic Friends. On this show, I bring on friends to talk about comics. This week, I'm bringing back my friend Dylan, who worked on the set of Deadpool 2. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Man, oh man. So you hinted at this a while ago. Like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you, totally. You were just like, oh, I got something. Uh, Nonchalant, wink, uh, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we waited, we made sure we're good, you can talk about, you know... We should be free to talk about whatever, right? As far as I am aware, any NDAs I sign that are non-business oriented are free to talk about. We can talk about production. We can do behind the scenes stuff. We can talk about other things. Any questions, I can probably figure out how to answer. It was a long shoot. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, I guess first we'll just sort of talk about, I mean, you know, I just saw the movie. Uh, you, was it Tuesday? Yeah, we went and saw it on Tuesday. Uh, it seems like 2018 is Year of the Dads. Yep. Um, we got uh, Dad Panther, in a way. Kind of. Dad's Panther. Dad's Panther. Uh, we got Avengers Infinity Dad. Infinity Dad. And now we have Dadpool. Yep. So uh, we have Dad Man and the Wasp coming in July. And I'm sure that'll be fun. But that... uh, <laughs> and then... it... Uh, and then Fatherhood Dad, and Family. I guess, with Aquaman does Whatever we're gonna call that, Aqua Dad. Aqua Dad, yeah. And then I guess I, I don't know. I don't know anything about it, but if it, if there's anything about fatherhood, that seems to be working for superhero movies this year. Yeah, and then but if, <laughs> if Venom can pull it off, then you've got a trifecta of like every superhero movie doing dad jokes this year, and uh, really great. It, it's working for them. Yeah, I think it is. Oh crap! Incredible also counts for that too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. That uh, yeah. Although uh, maybe that one's more like a mom movie. Yeah, that's fair. Or mom's not home movie, but. Well, let's see how it goes. That's probably got a dad joke in it somewhere. So overall, I mean, I had a really good time. Uh, I had heard from people that aren't super into violence that this one was kind of difficult for them. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, I can see where they were coming from. But wow, like I was just, just slack jawed the whole time. Oops, uh, forgot to say, heads up, if you didn't already know, and it should be in the title, this episode will have lots of Deadpool 2 spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet, please come... Just, Come back later. Come just tune in later. The corner, go go and know, see it. Tuesday cheap night. Just go see it. Don't take the kids. Or take the kids mm. if your kids are like super hardcore. But don't take mm. your kids. Don't take your parents. <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't go yourself. Yeah. Um, it's it's a kind of a messy movie. It's fun though. It's a lot of fun. You'll like it. I'm sure you'll like it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Super violent. Uh, but in, in a way that really worked for me. I guess. Like. Mm -hmm. It was mostly enjoyable. I thankfully, I personally was able to stay out of spoilers just because I, I closed my eyes during trailers because I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get that too. I usually watch like the first teaser and then I'm like, I can't watch anymore because mm -hmm. they do like eight or nine trailers per movie now, and it's it's mm -hmm. ruin most of the fun stuff. And especially yeah. when you're kind of in the industry, you can start putting things together. You you get used to how they they roll out a trailer, and they're like, okay, well. A to B, C to D, and then you get the whole idea. But, like, they did a pretty good job, I'd say, with these, at least the first couple of trailers, with not really showing what actually happened. So, mm. our, a couple of the the twists relatively stayed pretty under wraps, which I think pulled off really good. Yeah, I think so. I didn't know a lot about, you know, who was going to show up. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know Juggernaut was going to show up at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know shoot there was another like really big one that i was surprised that i avoided was it that one shot that they totally didn't shoot in vancouver when he was in the oh. expansion <laughs> oh yeah that's right i bet <laughs> we didn't even know that was in there that was, that was, that was a nice little bit was a great that's movie. great yeah that's awesome yeah i'm like and it's like the way that was shot they didn't even really need to be there for it you could have just nope. had you know you could have just filled a room and then just had them close the doors on some room anywhere else right exactly that was beautiful it, it was a beautiful it was a, shot. it was a perfect like little throwaway gag and i'm so happy it actually stayed in there yeah that's fantastic yeah uh was that something they talked about did you know that one was gonna happen we we kind of had speculations because like hmm. we we went through and like did all the x Manor stuff in victoria and like a bunch of stuff on stage uh... we had the the chair that he's rolling around in and we're like okay well the, the chair's here are we gonna, are they mm. gonna say? And then, like, we went through the whole shoot, and, like, well, nobody showed up. And they're like, 
we did one hour of filming in LA and we're like, oh, they probably did it there without us. That's great. So oh, man. we didn't quite know oh, what was well. going to happen, oh, but like, fine. it was either that or we figured they did like another Wolverine gag, but I kind of like this mm, one better because mm-hmm. it was way funnier. Well, I mean, they did do a Wolverine they gag. They did do a Wolverine. Uh, that was a, yeah. Mm. I'll get to those in a, in mm. a minute. There's, there's stuff I need to oh, sure. explain, or not explain, but I got to say mm, <laughs> about, okay. about those stingers at the end. But yeah, no, I, I found the movie super fun, super enjoyable couple of the, the story beats were a bit a little slow or a little kind of out of place but like the action was really good mm. the comedy all hit really well once you kind of get into the, the mood of it, it it flows fairly decently and even with the the couple of twists and turns it throws at you yeah mm-hmm. I'd, I'd say it was a, it was a for a sequel it was awesome like definitely one of the better x-men movies if we're gonna stick with that kind of film universe but yeah i enjoyed it i had fun with it yeah um i think there was a feeling I had when I was going to the first one, having some experience with Deadpool in the comics, not like, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not like an archivist or anything, but uh, just I was expecting Domino early, mm-hmm. early, early on. And I was expecting, I think, Morena Baccarin, Baccarin to play Domino. Yeah, I think that was kind of a sentiment a lot of people had. But then to what's her name? Zazie, Zazie, Zazie. Beats or Zazie Beats? Zazie, Zazie. Beats. OK, yeah, yeah, uh, she was great. She was and then her great. action sequence with them. I was just sort of riffing on, like, what kind of superpower is that? It was just, I was really fun to watch. Like, it was horrifying a little bit just because of all the just chaos on the board. Oh. But that also just like, wow. The entire, <laughs> that, actually seeing that Oshkosh scene, by the way, that big truck is called an Oshkosh. Um, Oshkosh. Oshkosh, yeah. Uh, seeing that whole thing actually on, on stage, because that was multiple different, like, weeks and all this other stuff. And it was so cool to finally see it all together and like how it actually like it turned out really smooth like we were all it's one of those things where we're like we know what's gonna happen but we don't know how they're gonna glue it together and Mm -hmm. it like shot for shot like that was a really like nice scene like like the action was good like you got the suspense you're like everything looked like it was gonna go horribly wrong it's like a drop of a hat and it never did it was great and it was a good introduction to the character too yeah that was luck oh 100 percent that was luck Luck incarnate. <laughs> <laughs> Luck isn't a superpower. Actually, complete train wreck of downtown Vancouver. It is apparently. Ooh. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it was yeah no it was it, it was super cool and like it, that's the perfect way of like because how do you explain a luck based superpower? You show basically that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I I really enjoyed her uh, that action sequence she had uh, just just kicking butt in uh, I can't remember the name of the school the Essex but school? in the school just beating up all of the. Um, but pedophiles, I guess. Yes. They're just going to call them that. I mean, yeah. I, I, I couldn't remember the word. <laughs> but, uh, no, oh, yeah. more, I guess, yeah. What, those dudes. Yeah. Um, or, orderlies. Orderlies, yeah, orderlies. that's the words. Seeing how that kind of unfolded, like, in the middle of the fight, just, like, things happening to them. Uh, and then you have that bit where that one guy, just it's like a bunch of, uh, uh, what, what do you call them, a bunch of just standing things fall on him, and it's just like, that was it? That's what's going to happen? And then the, when the bookshelf or the big metal shelf just, dro- yeah, just decapitates just him, right I went, whoa! Like, whoa. Just, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, every time you think, like, they like oh, that's, you know, that's pretty violent. No, they just lop a dude's head off with a bookcase, and it's, and all mm. the children cheer and they're really mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> those kids like magical those kids were so excited to watch somebody get decapitated like it was the Ugh. funniest thing in the whole world to watch yeah oh my goodness yeah uh that and the uh the the x-force gag uh that i wasn't ready for because i was just you know i i think i had heard that terry cruz is going to show up in the movie yep and i and i had heard well i didn't realize like who else was on the crew mm-hmm um, so weird little surprises all over the place. Like, um, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, Bill, is it Bill Skarsgård? Yep, Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, I was like, hey, that's the guy that played it. Yep. Oh. And like, he's gone. <laughs> and he's gone. And he's pu- he's puking. And they're dead. And they're all just the most they're, messiest they're ass. so dead. <laughs> so dead. And I, oh, I made the, uh, the mistake of um when uh, when shatterstar showed up i was like hey that's that's long shot right how come long shot ain't got four fingers what's going on and it said shatterstar i was like oh wait never mind then there's <laughs> nope nope uh splatterstar yep and we have splatterstar it's, it's <laughs> it doesn't it turns out it didn't matter he's he's gone he's just mm-hmm. he's just on a yeah i was like <laughs> i was like you're gonna have long shot for a moment for this moment that it was fooled you're gonna have long shot and domino like how lucky are these people gonna be it's like nope it wasn't him he would have been fine <laughs> <laughs> well he would have been so much better off Oh yeah, <laughs> but a, but a, a nod to Mojo World at all, right? In, in uh, was such movies. a was, like wow, 
they basically they and they completely glossed over it. They're like, I'm an alien from Mojo World, and nobody. They're like, okay, sure. And then he's just he just he's just green smear on somebody's windshield. Mm-hmm. Like that that was that was the the cool thing about this is like when they're when they've got like the writing for the last two Deadpool movies, they just go deep into X Men canon and lore, and then just grab the stuff that they know will never make it into an X Men movie because it's too complicated, too weird. Mention it, and then mm-hmm. just kind of shove it right back aside. So it's like the, for the fans only, they get super excited about it, and then either it becomes something just for them, or it just becomes a big joke. So and it, and it works. Yeah, it was, it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking, like, I mean, cable as complicated as cable is, they just didn't even bother. You know. Yeah. They gave him a daughter named Hope, which you know that that was relevant Close. back in EVX, yep. right? Like Avengers versus X Men. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's adopted daughter, but it didn't really matter because whatever, it's she, fine she here. <laughs> exactly like they could just do it or name drop and you go hey that's that thing but without giving you like the whatever without, the explanation yeah, without, being so because... again so for like the civilians the uninitiated going in they're like oh he had a daughter she's dead that's sad everybody going else like oh she's a big thing oh it doesn't matter but hey cool reference i like it so if, wait you what what's that like if if for the the people who don't read the comics they're like oh no he had a daughter that's sad mm-hmm. everyone else who right. read the comics they're like oh cool they're mentioning hope ah uh, she's dead okay well they mentioned her that's something like right you, yeah yeah you still get yeah. a sense of feel like this community thing even though it doesn't mm-hmm. end up really mattering but like you know it's for yeah. it's for the fans yeah yeah it worked, out. it worked out i think it worked out i think it was fun uh, yeah and then uh juggernaut like that was something like i'm like who's gonna be back there like what big thing are you hiding is it gonna be is it gonna be the blob is it gonna be like the blob would have been nope, funny. it's juggernaut and it's like the best juggernaut i've seen well we've only seen one other one and it was a really weird it was way to really do it. weird but, but like <laughs> I agree with like making a giant CG dude. Like it was, it was really, really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and the the funniest. And then for his first first thing that he does is freaking ripping Deadpool in half. Yep. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! It's so brutal. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, could you? Wow, now I'm in half. Because you get that thing. Yeah. There's like Deadpool's a huge Juggernaut fan. He's like, this is the greatest, most terrifying day of my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we all agree. It's like this is amazing. Also, why? Just yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, what a bl- what a blast! I had such a good time. Yeah, just was... a horrible, like just, just horrible, violent, great time. Yeah, it is. It is a mm. it is a deserved hard R. There is some great moments, great gags, a lot of violence, yeah. and a lot of stuff that it. If I heard they're actually they're like David Leach wants to release a director's cut with all the additional scenes that we shot in it. Ooh, if that uh-huh. gets released, it's gonna get a hundred times both worse and better. Because all the stuff Whoa. we cut out was, like, too much. Uh-huh. Mm, it is, mm, it's perfect. It's so good. Like, you gotta be in a good mindset. Because it's, it's some really dark, quote-unquote, dark stuff. But, like, it's funny as hell. Oh, Very twisted uh-huh. things. Which I'm, I think I can talk about. Well, talk, yeah. I... They spoiled a few I, of them on, like, Kotaku anyways. So I can talk about them. Oh, is that right? Yeah. You know, something to look forward to the Blu-ray for, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully. Um, yeah, I'd love to see the blooper reel on this movie. Which I think we'll maybe cover a little bit later. But, um... So okay, like how did you? So how did you get on this one? Like this is just like a, this is just through your regular work you were able to sign up, or like I don't I don't know what the process is like. Well, for this one, it's for I was I was a PA, so I was a, a locations production assistant. So basically, what that ends up being, it's it's glorified security and containment. So we hmm. class classically a PA will they'll, they'll empty garbages, they'll clean up the set, they'll help set deck move stuff around, they'll stand at doors and make sure people don't go in if they're doing gunfire or, or takes or anything, so, like, keeping eye lines clear. They're kind of, like, internal security, though they're, mm-hmm. like, they're literally the bottom of the pecking order. And again, like, the Canadian PA versus the American PA, a little bit different job description, but more or less, oh. yeah, because in the States, uh, they're actually, they're under, like, the Teamsters Union, so they're at proper security, slash, they also run coffees, and they'll get actors and stuff like that. Up here, we have uh-huh. different segregations for, like, the directors, they have their own type of, like, assistants, those are the guys that get coffee, they just, they're called, like, third ADs or TADs. Uh-huh. We end up just being, like, the security, and, like, the guys who make sure that the area we're filming in is safe and not broken and is in a nicer condition than we got there. More or less, we're, we're kind of like the PR, like, on-the-ground troops. The poor bastards you'll see in, like, the safety vest standing on the corner saying, hey, sorry, guys, we're filming. Could you go to the other block? That's Oh, that's that's what you were yeah. doing. <laughs> Which, it sounds okay. super glamorous and gives me a huge ton of credibility. But oh, sure. in reality, like, because we're on the ground, we, are, we end up being, like, near or behind camera or hidden behind mm-hmm. walls. I could 
every shot in that movie, I could point out what wall or doorway I'm hiding just outside of. And, like, you can hear everything because, you know, sets are loud and all that stuff. Nice. But, um, yeah, uh, typically oh, I, I do post sound. I've done, like, for Kairos or for a bunch of cartoons and stuff in town. But I, I do a lot of uh, outside work because it gets me out of the studio. Mm-hmm. Like, I did I did the, the full run of Altered Carbon doing the same gig, basically. And That's right. The, uh, uh-huh. My boss from Altered Carbon ended up, his next big feature was Deadpool. And he's like, hey, I'm going... Uh, do you want to work the summer? And I'm like, you know what? Summer outside filming? That sounds great. Deadpool 2? That sounds great. I'll do it. And <laughs> we're like, it's a summer shoot. Did it have like a cool, did it have like a cool code name? Because sometimes they do those like it, weird it code name things that are like. three code names. Are we, is it okay to yep, say that? I mean, it's after the fact, the movie's right? over, so it should be fine. Okay. And what are they going to do? Fire me from a show that doesn't exist anymore? Well, what if they try to use the same code name? No. I, <laughs> why, why would they do that, they, right? <laughs> they only do that on, like, series, like TV shows, so I should be in the clear. But anyways, uh, and then plus, like, they okay. all got leaked, like, immediately anyways. Uh, oh, because the, okay. the local news teams, they basically, they like, the, the Vancouver Buzz, like, web webpage basically goes to every production. It's like, hey, I know the streets shut down. What is this? And they're like, oh, it's so-and-so. It's like, oh, you mean Deadpool? And, we're like, and then they just tell everybody, and it's ruined. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it, at first it was Love Machine. And all of our, like, crew nice. badges were black and red and had Deadpool doing, like, the hand heart kawaii thing. And that Sweet. immediately everyone's like, oh. Because well, we used the, ca- the color scheme, so everyone's like, that's Deadpool. So that, mm-hmm. that blew up in our face. So they changed it then to Lucy, because, like, Lucy. yeah, I don't know why. They just changed it to Lucy. Uh-huh. But then it turned out that there was another show in town that was also, that was actually called Lucy for, like, a Hallmark TV show. So all of our, like, crew park signs said Lucy, but we weren't Lucy. So it got very mm-hmm. confusing. So like a couple weeks in, they changed it to what it ended up staying, and it was Caribbean Blue. So what? okay. So for why? The, uh, no idea. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm sure there's a reason works. for it, but yeah, they basically they we all got our tags. They're, everything was Hawaiian print and blue and very bright. So we got to go mm. around when everybody would say they're like, "Oh, what are you shooting?" It's like, "Oh, Caribbean Blue," and they're like, "Oh, what's that?" It's like, "Oh, it's some like treasure hunter." show from like the 90s family family film family film about like you know a guy goes to like the caribbean and hunts for buried treasure with his hot supermodel girlfriend like we just kept making things up or like it's a travelocity commercial or all this stuff that's the most that's fun you get to oh, have man. as a pa is somebody's like what are you shooting we're like mayonnaise commercial they're like i don't believe you and they're like shut up <laughs> actually to that point <laughs> yeah there was a uh, in the scene where like everybody's parachuting in and deadpool lands on like the big carnival sign yeah, that actually is just a, a a suburban neighborhood, like a few oh, like in one of the boroughs in in Vancouver, like all those houses that had people, that was family homes. That wasn't a set or a backlot or anything. Wow. So the super okay. funny thing is, all those houses, like they've been given film notices, they'd all been paid off, they'd all agreed, and like they're just like people in their windows, like staring, going, "Oh, they're shooting Deadpool, that's so cool." And then we had one house that's behind camera mostly, but they just kept putting up in signs signs in their window that saying, "We love you, Wade." And, like, and they kept inviting people over for, like, a backyard barbecue, but, like, 80, 90 people showed up to their house. They're like, oh, yeah, I live there. And we're like, don't. Stop lying. <laughs> they just kept bringing all their friends over to watch the shoot. We couldn't really do anything about it. But the funniest mm. thing is, is there was a house just up the street from there that had, like, a bunch of uh, kids. And it's the middle of summer, right? So they're not in school. So these kids, and they're, like, their cousins from Kelowna or whatever, came down. They're like, oh, what's going on? And I'm standing there, and I'm like, okay, great. I'm on child duty. I have to watch all these kids. And they're like, well, why don't you just, like, we all know it's Deadpool. I'm like, yeah, but if you tell people it's Deadpool, then, like, the paparazzi show up and they're super mean. And at that mm. point, the paparazzi had actually been in these, like, they were breaking into people's yards and, like, harassing their families and stuff and being, like, like, it was, they're, they're quite cruel. Like, it's not just like, oh. I've got a camera and I'm a huge jerk. The ones that are in, especially in Vancouver, they've been doing it for so long that they know how to goad you into hurting or harming their equipment so that they become in the right no matter what they're doing, which is super what? lame. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a really, like, I understand people have to make a living and stuff like that, but it's, it's a super like dirtbag thing to do. It's like, especially getting yeah. in fights with like kids because you want to get into mm-hmm. their yard. Anyways, like, they'd been in the area, and we had, like, police, you know, to kind of help escort people around. And I ended up telling these kids that, like, yeah, those guys show up, and they make a whole scene, and it it makes everybody's day suck. And the kids are like, oh, well, then what do you do? It's like, oh, often you just tell people it's a mayonnaise commercial. And I swear to God, uh, ten seconds after I said mayonnaise commercial, a guy walks up, says, hey, what are you filming? And this crowd of ten kids turn around and say... It's a mayonnaise commercial, this dude, and then proceed to make up the greatest story I have ever heard for a fake film. Because <laughs> we've got Ryan in the Deadpool suit on this 
like big fake billboard sign in the middle of the street, all these wiring and cabling for like all the parachuting stunts coming in, all these cars and uh, people on the ground. And the kids are like, they point at Deadpool like, that guy's ketchup and he's flying down onto the bread sandwich over there and he's going to smear himself all over it. And then that guy's a different condiment. And they basically made this whole, like they named each character like a condiment or like a hot dog or something. And they made the scene sound like they were just like vis effects people to be like edited in post. It was the dumbest thing ever. And the guy was like, dang, kids, you guys don't know nothing. He left. And I'm like, you guys just saved my life. <laughs> that is incredible. The funniest wow. thing ever. Like, and then like the kids are like, hey, you guys have been out here for 16 hour days. And like, you guys want some lemonade? And they're, and we're like, yeah, that'd be great. And then their parents bring us beers at the end of the night. And like, you guys did great. Like, thanks for, thanks for everything. It was super, super nice, which is, that's awesome. Which doesn't happen a lot, especially in Vancouver, because everyone's sick of filming at this point. <laughs> Oh, I see. Like, if you, yeah. if you film downtown, most people, like, if the nicest thing you'll get is, you know, somebody flips you the bird. <laughs> so. Oof. Mm-hmm. But, like, when you're in the suburbs, everyone's like, oh, this is kind of, this is neat. This is interesting. So it's it's a very different environment. But, yeah, that's, like, mm-hmm. one of the, the days where it's just, like, this is a really hard, long day. But, like, everyone's super nice, which is great. It's a, a really nice change of pace. You know, thinking about it, catching people flipping the bird uh in the, the downtown shots probably wouldn't have been inappropriate not at all uh <laughs> <laughs> just just all of the all of the things that happened down there you know it would just be it would i think it would add to the film somewhat it would it really would but i don't know i don't know <laughs> but there was there was like there it, it, it gets drastically weird we're like we were shooting we shot that on a part of town called Hastings Sunrise it's kind of like just outside of the downtown core it's a suburb area and stuff it's literally on a hill that overlooks the city Mm-hmm. Not quite as close as it shows it in the movie. Like, because in the movie, it's like you're on a hill in a suburb and then, like, down the hill and then there's all of a sudden office buildings. It's it's quite a lot farther away. But, like, there, mm-hmm. and we had a five or six block radius coned off. And not a lot of people showed up other than the people who live there. Whereas we were shooting outside Wade's apartment at the very beginning of the film at 3 a.m. downtown Vancouver, literally outside one of the, like, the cheapest, seediest bars called The Camby. It's like, it's one of the bars where all, like, the students go and people who, like, like your dime beers, and it's really gross and grungy. Mm. 3 a.m., the bar just closed. There are 500 people outside of the the bar watching us film because it was where they do, it's like the heavy rain towers and that guy gets hit by the car and it's like a big crash scene type thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just uh-huh. at the end, like, Wade grabs him just that Spoiler warning. Give you a sec. Just after Vanessa <laughs> dies, <laughs> where he runs outside yeah. and grabs the guy and throws him into a car, and then they get hit. And they're all, like, right. watching, and the rain towers are going off, and they're, like, 500 people literally waiting for this thing to happen, because they, they're like, oh, this is gonna be exciting. And we're literally, the camera is, like, in the alley down the street. They're all looking in the wrong direction. The stunts team is literally doing tests for, like, rain and, like, a car drive, and everyone's, like, cheering and going crazy, while we're literally shooting the other half of the scene that's actually interesting, where they're fighting in the rain in the alley, like, just around the corner, and no one knows. Super oh, funny and super weird. That is pretty bizarre, yeah. but I mean, people are so conscious of, of, I guess, the production process this time around, especially if you live near it, right? Oh, yeah. So that's... Well, the funny thing is, um, if you have, like, th- when we were filming it, Snapchat just did that thing where you zoom out and you can see populated, like, hotspot areas, where, like, oh, people are doing uh-huh. stories, and out of curiosity, like, we open our phone and, and zoom out, and it's the entirety of, like, the basically the little inlet that is downtown Vancouver is just this glowing red mass, and it just says Deadpool 2, and we're like... Everybody knows we're here now. Oh my goodness. It was super yeah. funny. And that was like, what was that? That was the first week of shooting. It only got worse from Ooh. there. <laughs> Luckily, like most of the, most of the stuff you see is like a couple things downtown and the rest of it is on stage or in quote unquote secret locations where like basically just nobody mm-hmm. really knew where it was. So yeah. That's ideal. It, w- it was super ideal. Like a lot of it takes place on sound stages in one of the studios here in town. And like the production cost on that, like all those rooms were built from the ground up. Like the uh, the intro scene where he's fighting in Hong Kong and then in Japan, like that little uh, triad bar where they have the big fight and then the bathhouse. Mm-hmm. That's all just built on one of the sound stages. And the funny thing is, those two rooms are actually one big room. Like it's one big sound stage, like a huh. big warehouse. But the platform that built that set is it's the bathhouse on one, and then if you look at the end of the bathhouse, like, the shot, there's, like, a paper wall with, like, a red light. On the exact opposite side of that wall is the the bar for uh, the Hong Kong side, which is was super funny because 
we did a few takes where like they threw each other through the walls and then it, that was the jump cut instead. And they ended oh. up just going with like, ah, we'll just do different locations. But that's one of the things that we get to do a lot is we got to see a bunch of different versions of the takes or different ideas that they had for how to, to cut stuff without actually cutting it. And it was, it was super interesting because like that was that bathhouse, like it looks all marbly. It's all made of stunt foam. So it's super soft, but it's also super nice and warm because it, it's a fully functioning bathhouse, like with hot tubs and, all those faucets all actually worked and all that stuff. Like our department went nuts on this show. It was great. Whoa. Yeah. Gee, literally this really is movie magic. It literally is. <laughs> yeah. And like right? there wasn't, Oh my God. Other than like the driving stuff, it, there wasn't hmm. a lot of like fake sets. It was all built. The, the Essex uh, school, it's the old mental Institute uh, out in Burnaby called uh, Riverview mental hospital. Uh huh. It's been literally every show that films here. If you need a spooky hospital, you go to Riverview because it's literally just a couple, it's like a couple mile long stretch of road that is all those kind of brick buildings. Like right. Supernatural shoots there, X Files, uh, The Magicians, Arrow, Flash. Like literally everyone, you need a spooky abandoned building, you go over there. And of course, wow. what's more spooky for a kid's orphanage that like puts the fear of God because you're a mutant in you than a spooky mental hospital? <laughs> Oh yeah, that we actually no got to burn down. It was the best day ever, because <laughs> the uh, when they're fighting Firefest, or even at the end, like the whole thing's on fire. So they actually built onto the existing buildings huge fake facades. So like basically another three foot of wall on each side, so they could light the building on fire without ruining the building because it's a historic site. So yeah, again, that art department is psychotic when they have a budget. Yeah, I mean, if they could pull it off, why not, right? Exactly. And I feel like they did. Oh like, yeah, that, that was. Everything looked really good. But my, I think my favorite one, though, the uh, the prison, uh, the icebox. Icebox. Yeah, the icebox. That big concrete room, mm-hmm. none of that CG. That's all practical. Oh, that is, really? That is an old uh, BC Hydro generator station with all the, ele- like, all the generators and turbines ripped out. So it's just a big couple hundred foot tall room that they just put all these, like, steel beams and crossbars and everything into. What? Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's so cool. And then like the, where the little security office is, directly to the left, that big slate wall is actually a giant wooden door. That's where I spent most uh-huh. of my day while I was there, opening this giant 300 foot tall door, like every 20 minutes to let the air in, because uh, Mr. Leach likes his atmosphere heavy. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a very common thing in film, like you'll use little like dry ice atmosphere to to get that kind of film, you, it gives, you actually get to see light. It kind of gives everything that fog feel to it. And when you're mm-hmm. in, doing interiors, especially if you want a very aesthetic lighting, you put a little bit in so you can get the the, the shafts of light and all that stuff. And it looks really nice. But Yeah, it did. Whoa. It, right? What they wanted to do specifically, and you can see this if you watch like John Wick, they pump so much in so that the air itself has color to it without really colorizing the, the footage in post. So it gives it an, mm-hmm. almost a, a kind of a comic book feel to it. There was so much atmosphere, especially in the, the prison, because we were at that set for three weeks. It was the hottest three weeks of the summer so far. We were stuck in that building that only had one door. Actually, it had two. There was a little side door, but we had to keep everything closed to keep the atmosphere in. Uh, mm-hmm. It had a metric crap ton of this. They ended up switching it halfway through because dry ice after a while, it, it bogs everybody down. So they ended up using like 300 pounds of incense. So it smelled really weird, too. Ugh. Plus, then now everything's, now there's the big fight with Cable, so everything's on fire and explosions. So it's just swelteringly hot in there. It's very hard to breathe. And it's also on, like, an abandoned dirt road somewhere in Surrey. So it's just like, if you wanted to breathe today, good luck with that. It was a very intense couple weeks for that one. Goodness. Yeah. So, okay, so I I made another mistake while watching the movie. Yeah. um, And it was just a a lack of understanding or misunderstanding thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, it seemed to me like the apartment shot, uh, that Cable, when Cable, like, came home and everything was burned, it looked like it could have been Deadpool's apartment. I don't know if that's, that was on purpose or not, or if I just was reading it very incorrectly. Because it looked like the same layout. Was that, do you, do you have any insight on that, or am I just a goof? I, you might actually be onto something. I know that that was actually, there was two separate, uh, sets built on the same stage. It was, it is a different build, but maybe the art department kind of laid it out similarly. Um, mm-hmm. 
having just to n- just ca- hammer in the parallels yeah, between the two could, like like that could very well have been an art department decision uh i know walking around it they did kind of have the same feel there were more or less studio apartments except he had that big stairway that totally went nowhere by the way it was it's mm-hmm. movie magic it's fake <laughs> they literally magic. just had that kind of room mm-hmm. with the the bar table and then filled it with bodies and ash but uh they might have actually you could very well be onto something on that one I'm not entirely sure. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably have to give it another watch um, whenever there's the home release mm-hmm. or, you know, just to get those nice extras. Yeah. We could talk about the domino scene. I can give you a breakdown for that one. Oh, because I would love to hear about the domino scene. This is actually... <laughs> the, the cool thing about this, this was actually a world record scene. That, like, really? That it's, it's, it's one of those things, like, it's it probably wouldn't make it in any books because not a lot of people will be, like, super fascinated. But in, like, the film community, it's a world record scene. Because the whole scene where, not just like where she's, most of the stuff where she's running down the street before she jumps like to get into the Oshkosh, that's on a blue screen in stage because having somebody run down the street while cars are smashing is surprisingly hella dangerous. So that didn't happen. Hmm. Hmm. But the the big Oshkosh, the big rig and like what they, to make that thing, what they took, they took like a German APC and then they built onto it and then they built four cars after it. And it actually, like, all those cells that kind of rolled off, like, cable, like, unhitched and pushed, that's how they were actually built to design. Yeah. That was 100% all built by our, like, the art team and the build team. Like, the the details on the inside that you don't see, like, are so good. Like, the weapon racks, they've got, like, cassette players with all these tapes and stuff. Everything in there is just in jokes and memes, like, for the crew Mm -hmm. or for X-Men things that you'll never see on the film. But it's literally, it's funny as hell. That whole scene where, like, anytime the Oshkosh is driving downtown, it's a stretch, I believe... It's from Howe Street, downtown Vancouver, to Butte Street, which is about a seven, eight block radius, all along Hastings. Uh-huh. And to make sure that everyone was safe, because that thing does not stop fast. And it can't reverse, and it doesn't turn around on a dime. So oh. to make sure everything's safe, we had, I think it was, we had 50 officers, each, like, two sets at each, basically, road crossing. We had, like, a hundred some odd traffic control people also on those runs and then we had i think ended up the final count on the final day ended up being 213 production assistants lined up on this road that ends up being the most people for a single safety lockup in any film ever because the entire shoot or shot was one continuous actual thing that we did downtown wow yeah oh my goodness so to break it all down we ended up having each like square block ended up having a captain and that captain would listen in to like, the director. So we ended up building this hierarchy of people. And it was awful because we we shot all that during the day. So it was like, we would start shooting at 7 a.m. We would finish around 6.30. So we'd get like the most maximum daylight downtown before it kind of like loses it behind the buildings. So we'd have to show up at 3 a.m. outside the arena downtown and then sign in 200 and some odd extra people that we've never met before and hope they know how to do their job. Hmm. It was super scary but like it turned out great it all worked and we had everyone every one of the block captains has their disaster story of like that two-day stretch because that's the middle of the the vancouver banking district it's all like lawyers and accountants and like higher up people in fancy suits who don't give a damn because they make more money than you'll ever see in your life uh-huh. and they hated us with a oh, fiery okay. passion it's like sorry guys like we're just gonna ask you to stay here for a minute like this big truck's gonna come down and it like if something goes wrong you will die there's no if ands or buts and they're like yeah but i've got a meeting in like five minutes across town i'm like well then you should have thought about that you knew we were here like that, yeah, that everybody got heads yeah, up Yeah, like you you had months to prep for this thing like stuff like that or mm-hmm. there was a couple scenes where like the the big truck was running down the middle of the road and the camera was supposed to follow it and there's not enough room so the uh, the camera was on a, a small, a, a kind of a big ATV. We, we called it the Warthog. It's li- like just like Halo. It's <laughs> it's the uh-huh. instead of a turret, it's a camera. It's the Warthog would drive down the sidewalk, and we had so many people who would just be like, "Sorry guys, can you just back off the sidewalk, duck in this building, like just for a sec? There's this thing coming down, like big truck, camera truck. It can't stop." And they would ignore you or scream at you, or you would like. We had this one like post, like postman, like Canada Post worker. Walking, delivering mail to all these buildings, and he had his headphones in, and we're like, hey man, you gotta stop. And he, like, literally flipped me off, took half a step, turned around, took a half a step, and this thing whipped past him about an inch from his face, 
So, like, that's the kind of stuff that we, we had to deal with. People so blatantly unaware of what was going on. It was super sad. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And there was, like, other horrible things. Like, I had this one lady where she like, refused to stop. And I'm like, ma'am, it's for your own safety. We don't want you to get hurt. Like, something could happen. And she screamed and yelled and all this stuff and called bloody murder. And, like, I'm sorry. We just don't want you to get hurt. Like, the worst thing could happen. You could die whirls around and says did you just like threaten me did you just threaten to kill me and she just starts going more or less ballistic very like screaming ranting raving lots of profanity curse words things that i really shouldn't be <laughs> replicating um and ends up actually mm -hmm. going over mm -hmm. to unbeknownst to her our first ad like saying your people are threatening to kill me and like i'll have you all sued i'll have you all arrested no 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 it's one of those things where you just lock eyes with the crazy person and said hey officer dave can you come over here for a second? I need your assistance. And it's, and you can literally, we watched her like get escorted off of our three block long set and just rant and rave the entire way down. It was, it's one of those things where you, you just can't, you can't tell with people. They're either, especially downtown, it's like they're, they're rich people that don't care. They're people who don't care or they're actual drug addicts who are crazy. It's something mm. that happens. It sounds like, uh, I mean, visually, just, just picturing this, it seems like something out of a comic book. Oh, it, oddly <laughs> enough, yeah. <laughs> there was a, yeah, yeah. it was, it, so like, it's just one of those things where people either, either are, they're super understanding and they're like, oh, you're doing your job, I understand. Or like, they're super excited because, oh, you're making a movie, that's interesting. And then there's the people who are either jaded in their daily lives or jaded because they've been seeing too many films around town and they're just like, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, I kind of understand, you know, yeah. you're just trying to live your life, yeah. but at the same time, I feel like people did have advanced warnings, so I don't exactly, know. Exactly, but. It's just going to happen. Like, now. and then the thing, Oof. the, uh, when Domino jumps in the Oshkosh and it kind of thinks somebody gets shot or something, but the Humvee that's in front of it kind of does a turn and gets hit, right? And mm -hmm. it kind of blows through it. We were supposed to do two versions of that take. The first one, it was supposed to kind of like bump into it and shove it. And then the second one, it was supposed to drive through it. So everyone's like, okay, for first take, the Oshkosh is going to come down Hastings, it's going to hit the Humvee, the Humvee's going to spin, and it might hit this building, so keep everybody back and all this stuff. It'll be good. It did not go as planned. The Humvee actually ah. was, and the, the Humvee was driving, it wasn't just placed there, right? Like, they had stunt team in it, and the Oshkosh had its stunt team in it, so everybody was very, like, professional, and they were ready to go. So the Humvee drives, he hits the e-brake, he spins to a horizontal, vertical, he gets in line to get T-boned by the, the Oshkosh. And instead of hitting him and spinning him out, it drove through the Humvee. It ripped Ooh. it in half. Oh my god. So, like, everybody was fine. Like That's good. But the, the PA that was standing on that corner, one of my buddies, uh, also named Patrick, oddly enough, <laughs> he was, like, standing there, and he saw this thing happen, and literally he was like, I'm going to die, as the bumper of the Humvee flew past his head and hit Ooh. the building behind him. He's like, ah, good. I'm going to go to Crafty if you guys need me find me in 10 minutes. <laughs> That's, oh my god. So, like, stuff like that happens. And we we did, unfortunately, have a few accidents, some very major accidents on this set. And mm -hmm. that did result in some very major changes to the movie itself. Oh, gee. Which, okay. it, was, it was part of the job. It's something that is very regretful to have happened. But these things do happen. And, unfortunately, it just happened to us one day. I see. Uh, my goodness. Yeah. But uh, you, you don't you don't have to talk I, about that. I like, don't know. think That's I okay. should be at liberty to really talk about it. But just to yeah, be aware, okay. like this is one of the reasons like stunt people kind of want to be recognized like at the Oscars and stuff like that, because they they do some of the hardest work on set and they never get recognition for it. And yeah, like, no they, these guys are some of the like ballsiest people like you'll ever meet. And they're also like the nicest people. And mm -hmm. they do some of the craziest junk. And it's yeah, it's just it's it's always sad when something like that happens. But it, it kind of brings relevance that these are highly skilled people that should be treated better than they are mm -hmm. and that's super depressing and let's let's talk about something else sure uh well we do have some twitter questions if sure. you're ready to hop on that for sure all right uh so first question comes from uh the snick man hello snick. friend of the show what are your thoughts on the claims that the film was guilty of fridging this is something i talked about at some length in my review or on my review um so the snick man's got a cool podcast called unsourced wall um, you guys can check that out if you want, but um, I, you know what, I, uh, it, I feel like it happened. That's the thing that I thought as soon as uh, we knew that they weren't gonna get out of that scene, or she wasn't gonna get out of that scene. Okay, um, and it does sort of propel him on his arc to either die himself or 
you know, figure out what the heck she means about uh, his heart not being in the right place. So, I mean, I mean, I think it, I think she got bridged. I think that's, it's not quite the same, you know, uh, as it just happening off screen and him kind of discovering it, but it's still. Yeah, it, um, it, it, it did happen. I would, that. I would, I would call that a fridging, not like, again, not a full on shoved off screen, died off screen. Now I'm sad type thing, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was used to propel the story forward. And I'll admit, I'm not a huge fan of, of it. I know it had mm-hmm. to be done to get to give us a reason and there are especially with the kind of the story they've laid out it's like deadpool doesn't have a lot of things he connects to at least in the movie verse like he's got vanessa yeah. you need to to really to push him to do something he, mm-hmm. you, you kind of unfortunately because of the way they set it up you have to do that even though like there are better ways to go about doing it that don't kind of fall to the cliches of we killed the woman you are sad mm. so yeah. i i will admit like I would say fridging, yes. I would say that they kind of wrote themselves into a corner on that one a little bit. And it mm-hmm. is kind of one of the... It, it was one of the moments where, like, it, it became super real and super, like... like the, the emotion kind of got a little weird in the movie for me. Mm. Like, it was... Like, again, like, Ryan did a very good job portraying it. And, uh, Miranda Barker. Yeah, she did. I think, uh, right? uh, Again, she did a great job of dying, getting stabbed with a butter knife. Or, no, she had shot. Oh. Got shot. Yeah, she got shot. Was that another tape? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. that was no, that was not another tape. <laughs> that's a totally different. And, wow, like that's rough. <laughs> Butter knives are not are not sharp. No, they're not. That but I will say that uh, something that I thought was uh, really beautiful uh, in a horror, you know, in, in a movie kind of way mm-hmm. about uh, how they handled the scene, uh, and that totally just like threw me mm-hmm. during it is when he catches up to the dude that shot her, uh, and he just grabs him and hugs him. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for it. Like, that like was, I was just like, "Whoa!" Like that one, I can say what a choice. There was a... different versions of it. Like there was the, mm-hmm. the, the punch, there was the toss, there was I think there was a couple other ones where like hit him with a car door or something like that. But that mm-hmm. one, I will agree, was the most powerful because it, it it shows you in a moment that you've totally broken this guy who's more or less unbreakable. Yeah, and like he can't die, but he's gonna take you out knowing that like basically making you feel as awful as you can so mm-hmm. like i th- i think that like the shot was really nice even though it, like it kind of the the emotion got a little bit ruined of also how funny it was because you know anytime oh, yeah. it's just yeah. smoked off screen that's kind of hilarious um mm-hmm. but yeah no I, I i think the the way they they ended that bit was really good i will admit right. the following cut was incredibly jarring but that's which was well because he's like hugging the, the guy title sequence uh wait wasn't it the title sequence where it's like did you really just do that like i can't yeah, believe yeah you. no it was, what was the, there was like there was a cut maybe it was the one after that hmm. i don't remember but yeah yeah so i mean bottom line yeah it was a fridging i think it's probably like you said like they put themselves in the situation where they kind of felt like they had to to yeah. keep the movie going you can't open an action sequence or an action movie with uh things being okay and then not expect it to yeah like, all go to heck like it's not that's not how this works um but i will say that like i'm curious to see in the end if they really commit to undoing it since he got access since he just grabbed cable's uh time time travel device at the end and just yeah. canceled that one out so i'm like all right well <laughs> as far as i know this... i think they do okay sure i'm pretty that's i'm pretty fine. sure the, the way that like i think is like with the, the time travel finagling um he lets the rest of the x-force die except for peter and he saves yeah, Vanessa. Right. He only saves two people. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think the rest of them all. Uh, I think they all they all stay dead. Though I could be wrong. You never know. It's one of those things where they could just be like, yeah. ah, they totally lived. It's fine. But um, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, surprise, Brad Pitt. Right. Right. That was, I didn't you know even know this? that was <laughs> that was that was the other one. We just I was like, like wait, like I missed it. And then my wife was like, I think that was Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah. The, the funny thing, again, like that whole scene took place on that the street with the kids. And yeah. it was always it was stunt guys in costumes falling in. So we didn't quite know who was who and who died. We know how everybody died. We just didn't know who was who. Because at right. that point, we hadn't actually, because on that day, it was just all all the stunt guys. So we hadn't seen who was cast at, at anybody. Because all that stuff was done uh, like a month later. If you had studio, like all the oh. helicopter stuff and all the the fake yeah you'll see like if, you, if when you watch the trailer you'll see like bedlam fighting guys and uh shatterstar fighting guys that totally never shows up in the movie like all the fake scenes and stuff like that that uh, all got shot like a few like a month or two later so we yeah. were we were playing the game it's like okay we know somebody dies at the bus somebody gets wood chippered somebody gets spit on and somebody hits like the electric wires we just don't know who and in what order so that was mm-hmm. so when it, when it all came down we're like oh good you're the one that died oh, and then like because because the thing with uh, Vanisher, that was that was literally an empty 
parachute that they slammed against the thing. So we're like, we have like, is it just going to be a gag? He's invisible the whole time. We didn't even know they were going to do that. So yeah, that was, like when that that happened, when like the zap happened, we were so happy. It was so funny. Yeah, and, and honestly, like, uh, cause you for up until that point, even watching the movie, you don't know if anybody's actually there. You're like, is it just a like a what is that? Yeah, like, and then uh, uh I think uh my wife when we were watching it she she saw it and like she, did somebody just throw a backpack like what what happened it was like oh it's an invisible guy <laughs> it's an invisible I don't know. Guy. yeah yeah it was, it, that, that was that was that was great yeah. it's that's kind of one of the things we're like we know everything but we don't know the order and sometimes like they still just like sneak stuff in there that we we never saw right yeah yeah uh next question comes from at good job grandpa just had him on last episode since deadpool can be so quippy is there a scene filmed as a placeholder for actors to adr or is it more improv on set so this is all you because i have no idea (laughs) (laughs) well you could guess well actually it's it's kind of an interesting way like they have the script that gives them i think one or two maybe three versions because it's ryan and the two writers write the whole thing and on the day when they're they're performing it, they'll perform a, the couple that they wrote down. And then I think the best example I can think of, uh, Zazie and Ryan, when they were doing the, the interview in the back of the bar, that whole shot that's maybe like a couple minutes long, we did that for, we ended up doing that for most of a day, where it was just the two of them making up different things to say in different ways of going through the yes i am no i'm not thing mm, and there was a bunch mm-hmm. of different versions where like they either like they crapped on all over like the marvel universe or all over ryan or something like that and like there was the version that's like something about like that's as fake as like ryan reynolds abs like yeah but i'd still bang him yeah me too or like something like that or they would like just make fun of them or like that went on for ages and surprisingly i was surprised to, f- to figure this out just me being an audio guy the the deadpool mask itself is surprisingly like easy to talk through like there's a bit of muffling but it's not as bad as i would have figured so Hmm. a lot of the stuff ryan still does go in and they clean up the dialogue with adr especially for like the action beats where he's flipping around or something or Mm -hmm. if any of the crazy crazy heavy fight scenes they'll have uh like jackson he's the one of the stunt guys he'll do all of his stunt stuff and he'll he'll say all the lines but ryan will just go into the booth after and overdub them um and then sometimes they'll think of a line that's funnier or if it's like a trailer like the green brand trailer where they have to remove the swearing they'll do a, a, a cleaner version stuff like that so it kind of depends but they do if they have time which we had a ton of time it ended up being like a eight month eight plus month shoot to huh. do a two hour thing and they they went through and they made sure they got every quip they could think of and kind of how everything felt really good and again going back to the the street with the kids there's nothing better than watching Ryan Reynolds getting a wedgie up on a sign at seven in the morning as all these parents are like making breakfast for their kids, swearing about Hitler like for an entire neighborhood of ten year olds. There's something very funny about that that we could never oh put God. in the movie. Yeah. yeah. So like so yeah, Jeez. it's it's kind of a bit of both. If uh if I get to get roundabout to the answer, yeah. Excellent. That's I mean it makes sense to but it's cool to actually hear you hear you spell yeah. it out like that. Okay, our last question comes from at LeBlanc Web. Uh, how many takes were blown due to laughter? I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> um, I will say quite a few. And it's because as the crew, we're very professional. We don't find anything mm. funny. There is nothing, no matter how much you scream it, will make us laugh, which is a horrible lie. Uh-huh. <laughs> a lot of the time <laughs> it's like people will flub and you'll have a funny thing or like, like they'll they'll do one of the bits and it'll be so funny and then like the pause after where we're like we can't laugh because they're still rolling and the direct like David Leach the d- director is just watch- like sitting there he'll lock eyes with crew members and he'll like I'm not gonna say it until you laugh <laughs> like like stuff like that where like it, it it's a funny show like after a while sure like the joke stops being funny but that's where the whole the quippiness and the the extra takes that Ryan does come in handy. Because we'll be like, okay, he's doing this bit again and again and again. And then he says something different and everyone will just snap and it'll Ooh. fall into laughter. <laughs> but that the, that's sort of a sign that this one worked. Or exactly, like, yeah. It's like a, and it, 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 you can really feel like that, uh, and I hope this is the case, but my vibe was that you, y'all had a lot of fun making this movie. We had like, a blast making this movie. Like That's good. This, I'm glad. This one was, without a doubt, like I've worked on a bunch of shows like for years. This one had... The crew and the cast, especially the cast, were the nicest human beings on the entire planet. Like that's so which, good. Which, 
That's we were sense. super relieved by it. like the first couple times we met Ryan because Ryan's a Vancouver boy. He's just like he's you know being nice and he's pleasant and everybody's but he's kind of quiet because he's doing work and we didn't like nobody wanted to bug him or anything. But the best case of this was like everyone's got their like their Ryan or Blake story or their cable. Why I can't I remember his voice actor uh, Josh Brolin. Yeah, we, everybody's got their story for like everybody on set like something they did. My one of my friends Nick, one of my roommates, he, on his first day on Deadpool, we were at the icebox prison and ryan blake and their two kids come up and they're coming through the door blake gets called away and she's like oh can you hold this for a sec and he turns around and she gives him her child and not like oh you hold my child it's gross it's like hey you look trustworthy i need to go and take care of my other kid for a sec don't drop this type thing and then like oh, wow. and they ended up becoming fairly decent friends like huh. you know like work friends type thing to the point where yeah. like you know Ryan would come in and he's always, almost always like on door duty. So we'd open the door for him. And, and Ryan would like one day came in and he's like, you know, you got a nice butt. I'm going to call you Bootylicious. And for the rest of the show would refer to this dude as Bootylicious. And they would have like oh my gosh. butt comparison contests to see who had the nicest butt. Like, uh -huh. like silly stuff like that. It was super fun. Or like uh, Blake came up to me one day and like I was doing uh, basically, you know, the buzzer you always hear when you're on like a TV show and they're like, mar, mar, and, like that's a cut and like everybody leaves type thing. Yes. I was manning that button basically one day. We were, oh, and we were doing a take, and they we could you can't leave like if you open the door, it makes a slam, and then the sound guys hear it, and everybody gets mad. So we're doing mm. a take, and Blake and her kids are there, and she's like, "Oh, we can't leave until like she's explaining to the kids like, oh, we can't leave until the, the buzzer goes." And her daughter was like, oh, "Can I hit the button?" And she's like, "Is it okay if she hits the button?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's okay." And like I was just like, "Oh, I turn, I take my headphone out of my radio, and like when you hear cut, hit this button twice." And she's like, "Okay," and we wait and we wait, and you just hear. That's a cut, and, burp, burp, and she hits the button. She like giggles and laughs, and everyone has a great time, and it's hilarious. That's yeah, nice. and like everybody Man. does like they're super nice. Freaking Terry Crews was he was there for three days, and he was like just just giant dude who was giving out high fives and joking around with people and all this stuff. Here's a question for you. Uh oh, uh -huh. did you do you follow like Ryan on Instagram by chance? Uh, I might. There was a uh, Twitter for sure. Twitter for sure. I don't know if you posted on Twitter, but basically. When we were doing reshoots in February, he was taking Instagram videos and being a goof. Because there's this, between the two sets, there's this giant, long, white hallway. And we all agree uh -huh. it looks like a murder hallway. Because it's, it's, the studio is a repurposed building. It's been like, right. like it was like a Sears lockup at one point. It was a butchery at one point. It was like a, a grocery lockup. It's been like a giant hangar warehouses, right? And it's got mm. this weird gross white hallway and he's walking down it and he's taking a video and he's like uh oh, this is like, i'm pretty sure somebody's been murdered in this hallway like everything's made of hepatitis it's super gross and mm -hmm. he posted that and instantly because this was this was reshoot so they, they were literally they were just shooting additional like comedy bits and all the stingers and stuff and we we're like okay we have nothing to do let's mess with ryan so we made sure he was on set one day like like on set doing takes and three of our guys ran into the hallway with like white painter's tape and started putting body outlines all over the hallway like murder scenes and uh -huh. <laughs> put up all these cones and caution tape and as they're doing it like the makeup effect this guy walks by he's like are you guys making bodies they're like yeah he's like reaches into his like his kit bag he's like here's a bunch of blood packs just smash them on the ground and make it look good so we literally made this entire hallway look like a huge murder site and uh -huh. the rest of that day like Nobody said anything. Ryan didn't say anything. Nobody posted anything. The only thing that happened is Josh comes out of the hallway one day. He's like, somebody's trying to mess with Ryan and high fives all of us. And we're like, yeah. And then three days later on his Instagram, he's like just walking past and he turns the corner of the hallway and there's just all this blood and all these dead bodies, like all these body outlines. He's like, what the hell? And there's just like all these videos of him like freaking out and like, huh? And like, it was just something for fun that kind of like boosted crew morale. But the yeah. best part, not like the fact that like Ryan did this, like got, went along with it and enjoyed the joke or all this stuff. The best part about that is there was theory videos and articles about what does this hallway mean? How does this portray to Deadpool? Like, what are all this stuff? And all of us are just sitting back laughing so hard because people are going crazy. It's like, hey, this is spoilers for Deadpool too. Like, there's going to be this hallway fight with all this blood and all this stuff. And we're like, no, we were just pranking Ryan. But I like your plan better. <laughs> nice. Yeah, like that is that is great. That had to be oh, my man. favorite part. And I, <laughs> I can't imagine how guys who are like working on like Infinity War and stuff must have felt where all these community and like fandom sites keep posting like theory videos and breakdowns and 
they're all wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. There was a there mm-hmm. was a couple uh, Nerdist did when the first trailer dropped, and like the Oshkosh drives downtown, and you see a sign, and it's Hastings. I'm like, well, that's the street we filmed it on. It's called Hastings Street. And they're like, if you pause uh-huh. right here and look, this street sign says Hastings. Now, eagle-eyed viewers know that Alex Hastings was one of the writers for this arc of Deadpool, and that must mean that what? this is this, and they're going to do this storyline and all this stuff. I'm like, or, you know, we, we just filmed on that road. That could that could mm, be it. Nah, it's too simple. Exactly. Too straightforward. It's like stuff like that. Yeah. Or, like, people were doing, like, who's the kid? Is like, like, it could be this guy, or it could be this fire guy, or this guy, or this guy. It's like, or it could be Fire Fist. Nah, that's stupid. Nobody likes Fire Fist. And we're like, but... So, like, stuff like that. Like, yeah. that was... So like, I can't imagine how guys on like the like the Star Wars movies or like Avengers, like the big big ones, even though like like Deadpool beat out Infinity War, not to brag or anything, but like mm-hmm. it didn't feel like a big big one, even though it, it technically it's it's one of the big ones for this year at least. But yeah. like I I kind of wonder like how it feels being on the other sets, like you know people are like, oh man, I wonder who's gonna live or who's gonna die, or like oh man, maybe this story's gonna happen, and they're like, well no, actually it's actually it's this thing instead, and you're all crazy. I think yeah. that was that was fun. <laughs> that was fun as all hell. <laughs> yeah, uh, being in the know must be well. It sounds like it's a, a totally different experience. Yeah, but gee, man. Yeah, and like Oof. there's 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 tons of stories and stuff I could I could talk about. Just like the crazy rigs and the setups, like the the whole the like I got. Can I just do one more? I know we're like we're hitting two hours, but there's one one stupid thing that I just got to comment on. Yeah. Do okay, it. so when they're escaping the icebox and they're rolling down the, the snowy hill and off the cliff, right? Yeah. During the first set of shoots, like back in October, we shot all that on a blue screen in stage, put like some fake snow down. And they rolled down this big blue board and they edited it all and it looked, and it looked great because we saw it in some pre-release stuff that they showed the crew. And we're like, oh, that's great. When they did the reshoots in February, at that point, snow had fallen and was all over the mountains. And somebody... Got the great idea. They're like, we're going to reshoot that rolling down the hill scene on top of a mountain. Every crew member was like, but why? (laughs) The answer, we Uh, have money and it'll look nicer. Agreed, but uh why? So fast forward to the middle of February. My team of five guys get sent up to one of the local ski hills here, Grouse Mountain. And they're like, okay, we're going to be here in three days. Go. And we're like, what do you mean? It's like set up tents, set up heaters, set up everything on the side of a ski mountain. And make it look good. And we're like, okay, we'll figure that out. Now, to get to the top of Grouse, it's not like drive up the mountain. It's no, everything is only accessible by gondola, unless you're walking. So all the oh. camera gear, all the sleds, they had to take the the giant techno cranes, put snow treads on them, attach them to the bottom of these gondolas, send the gondolas up, all this stuff. It was nuts. And then we get up there, five feet of snow, 90 kilometer an hour winds. Overnight, we're supposed to get another 40 or 50 centimeters of snow. And they're like, okay, we'll be here tomorrow morning. And we're like, the mountain safety guy told us to leave. It's not safe. <laughs> so, like, uh-huh. we had this huge, crazy snow adventure of, like, trying to get all this gear up. And what ends up happening, like, we got the shot. We got everything up there. Because, the, of course, the day they decided to shoot, blue sky, it's clear, it's beautiful. The snow looks nice. Like, I've got so many, like, pictures on my phone. Like, the whole place looks gorgeous. But they take mm. this... 80 foot boom techno crane that's a big truck that has a big extendable arm that literally it's just for camera work on it and they attach it to their big like grouse mountains big uh ski hill grooming tank truck and then they put a big 70 foot cable on the back of it and then they just drive it off of the black diamond slope and leave it dangling (laughs) and then have the entire crew cut steps in the snow all the way down and that's how they got the shot and it, it looked great but the problem is, for somebody like me, I have terrible vision. So I have to wear, like, my snow goggle polarized thing so I can actually see. But I need to get down to set, which means I have to walk down these white, very skinny steps that we custom made into the mountain. I can't see anything. I don't know where the ground is. I just know that there's, like, a, you know, couple hundred foot drop until the tree line, and I don't want to fall. So that was my adventure for that day. And, like, all this crazy stuff happened. And we got the shot, and it turned out great. But, like, that was just one of the crazy things where, like, you just, you end up getting stuck on a mountain doing something that's literally going to be in the movie for three, four seconds, maybe a minute, and <laughs> everyone's fearing for their life. It did look it great. Looked, it was great. <laughs> but, oh, my like, gosh. it was that's, so much effort. Yeah. I loved it, though. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Whew. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, okay. that's all. I'll, 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 yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's Deadpool 2. Go see it. It's great. We put a lot of work into it. Um, It was a lot of fun. Yeah. 
if people want to follow you, check out your work or support you, I guess, uh, what, Cardboard Knights? Uh, or... Easiest way would be uh, at CK Pro on Twitter, Cardboard Knights on YouTube. We do, we haven't done anything in a while. We've uh, been backlogging a bunch of stuff that hopefully will get done soon. We've got, actually, we've got a new thing that's secret and coming. That might be exciting. Uh, but we do uh, a radio show called Kairos. Uh, Patrick, you are part of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a thing that exists. It hasn't updated in a while, but it exists. Uh, yeah. So those are our two places. We're also on Facebook if you want to poke around on that. Um, yeah. We're around. We do stuff. I right. make movies. Thanks for coming on, man. Dude, Super appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Thanks for tuning in to the Comic Fiends Comic Friends. And don't forget... The Comic Fiend is your comic friend, too.